ghosts of this public house appear to be particularly terrifying, in that if they want you to see them and go with them, they will come to fetch you. Colin was an elderly gentleman who had been a widower for some time. In his younger days he had been a policeman and a highly respected man in the community. As he got older and consciously infirm, Colin gave up driving and took things a little more easy, spending far less time at his favourite local, Pelsall Social Club, otherwise known as the Scratter. Although he had become a little physically infirm, he did not stop reading, doing crosswords and listening to the radio, which he enjoyed. His neighbours, Mr and Mrs A, would often pop in to keep him company for a while and took round daily meals for him. At this point, he was no longer able to spend time with his friends at his favourite local, the Scratter. Although now rather housebound, he remained a creature of habit and always waved goodbye to his neighbours through the window as they set out for work. Everything had been absolutely fine, until on one occasion when Mr A popped round, Colin seemed a little bothered, and told Mr A that when he returned home from shopping the day before, as he walked past the living room door, he saw a lady and a young girl wearing old-fashioned clothing sitting on his sofa. He stopped and looked at them and told them that if they didn't leave the house at once, he would call the police. By the time he returned to the living room after putting his shopping bags in the kitchen, which was the room next door, the lady and the girl had gone. He was concerned because he was definitely sure that he had locked up before he left the house to do the shopping and couldn't understand how these people could have got into his house. Colin then went on to say that a rabbit had got into his house as well on that day and he'd thrown a shoe at it to get it out. At first, Mr A didn't know what to say. Colin reiterated that it was definitely there and he wasn't seeing things. Mr A suggested that the rabbit might have escaped from one of the neighbouring gardens and suggested that he keep the back door closed a little. When Mr A called round the following day, Colin was still a little bothered and told Mr A that he had seen a reflection in the back of the silver spade on his fireside companion set of some young girls dancing in the living room. Mr A really didn't know what to make of this and passed it off as being a trick of the light, thinking to himself that the strange reflection must have been playing on Colin's mind all day. The following day, when Mrs A popped round, Colin told her that he had been woken the night before by a little girl and a lady who were sitting on the end of his bed. He was annoyed about these strangers being in his house and wondered how they had got in. Mrs A attempted to put his mind at ease by telling him that he was probably having a bad dream, but he told her in no uncertain terms that they were definitely real people. What Colin was seeing was starting to be of concern to Mr and Mrs A, as their neighbour was clearly distressed by them as he felt that people were invading his home. When Mr A called around the next day, Colin was very irritated as he explained to Mr A that people were walking out of the walls and through his house to get to the scratter. They were people who he had known and they were asking him to go with them. Colin wasn't particularly scared by this but was again irritated that he had uninvited guests in his home. At this point it was getting difficult for Mr and Mrs A to explain these sightings away, especially as their neighbour was completely coherent. He didn't have Alzheimer's or dementia. However, after discussing the matter, 
Mr and Mrs A decided it was probably best if they spoke to Colin's nephew, as Colin did not have any children of his own. They wanted to explain that something appeared to be wrong and that he should visit his uncle. Colin's nephew did not live locally but quite a distance away. Neither Mr A or Mrs A had ever seen or spoken to Colin's nephew in all the years they had been there. The following day things were worse. Colin told Mr A that he couldn't sleep the night before because there were people standing all around his bed talking and they refused to go away and he could see more of them on the landing. He told Mr A that if it didn't stop he would call the police to put a stop to it as he had had enough of all these strangers in his house. On this occasion he was so aggravated by the visitors that he asked for his bed to be brought downstairs. When Mr A visited the next day, Colin was scared, not by the people upstairs, but by what he had seen in the living room. He told Mr A that there was a head behind the other wing-back chair in the living room. It was a horrible head which kept tormenting him by jumping up or out of either side of the chair. It was like it was playing a horrific game of hide-and-seek, and that really scared him. It was the first time Colin had ever said he was scared. Prior to the appearance of the head, the constant and regular presence of people in his home got on his nerves more than anything, but something about the head really terrified him. The following day, Colin's nephew arrived and thanked Mr and Mrs A for contacting him. The neighbours now felt better that Colin's nephew was there and could help him. It was a weight off their minds. Colin's nephew moved the bed downstairs at this point. The following morning, Mr and Mrs A noticed that the nephew's car had gone and that Colin was not in the window waving them off to work. They thought little of it, thinking that the nephew may have put the car in the garage and that Colin was probably busy having breakfast with his nephew and his wife. Mr and Mrs A never saw Colin again. When they arrived back from work, one of the other neighbours who was also keeping an eye on Colin called around to tell them that he must have passed away that night or in the early hours as she couldn't get an answer from the phone or door that morning, so she called the police. The police had to break in, and when they did, they found Colin dead in his bed. Mr and Mrs A were perplexed, and wondered what had happened to Colin's nephew. It was then that they learned that for some reason, rather than staying in one of the bedrooms in the house, of which there were plenty. Colin's nephew and his wife decided to book themselves into a nearby hotel and leave Colin alone to cope with his interrupted evenings. It was a desperately sad end to a week which was plagued with horrific ghostly encounters from those who seemed to have come from the scratter to take Colin with them.